Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 253. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Charlie. Hello, Norman. Hey there, man. It's been a while. How are you doing, man? I'm still alive. Thank you very much. <laughs> still alive. Uh, yes. I would be worried if you were not. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and also joining us today, he's a new guy on here, but a friend of mine, Starstream. Hello, Norman. Hey there, Star. How are you doing? Fine, fine. Since you're new, right, we need to ask you the four important questions. Like, these questions are pretty simple, nothing too hard. And question number one is, favorite pony? Fluttershy. Fluttershy, yes, another guy in the group. Hey, you know what? All three of us are Fluttershy friends, right? Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Yay! The Fluttershy fan club. Woohoo! <laughs> Woo, yay! Yay. So, um, with favorite pony out of the way, favorite episode? Favorite episode. I have no favorite episode. What? <laughs> How could you? I think there's too many interesting episodes. Kind of hard to choose one. Oh, kind of hard to choose one, eh? Well, that's true. I find that a bit odd because it's usually the pony part where people would say uh, they can't choose because they like all of them. <laughs> In terms of episode, this is the first time I've heard that. You can't pick an episode because there are just so many interesting ones. Well, we did have a few like those. Really? Yeah, a few. But anywho, well, let's just say all of them, yay. <laughs> so, uh, third question is, how did you become a fan of the show? It's a long story, but a friend of mine introduced me to it. And because bored one day after finish watching what the show, then I decided, mm, I just watched MLP and see how, what so much big deal about it. And then originally, how I watched was, I knew all the music, basically skip all the s- singing and all these things and just watch the episode until like, then found out about somewhere else that there's a lot of fan music that's happening and just go re-watch the episode and listen to all the music again. See, the music are good. You don't skip the music. <laughs> Alright, so that's how you became a fan. So, what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? It's kind of a hard thing because, you know, it's pretty much a stereotypical thing saying that girls can't like and boys can't like these kind of things that's it yeah uh, it's a bit of a kind of like makes it difficult so it's lazy to explain to them most Uh, of the time yeah yeah i get the feeling too sometimes it's like too too troublesome to explain like you know what i don't care so yeah judge all you want i don't care yeah all right thank you for answering the four questions but Let's get on to the news. But before that, uh, people were wondering, Charles, where have you been? Like, where have you been all this time? Like, um, I think the last time you came on here was a few times. I think that was for... Um, was it video game related? No, I think it was the con. I kind of forgot. Sorry about that. Like, um, ah, French Air Express. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was there for the French Air Express, yes. Yeah, uh, okay. Hmm, where have I been? Uh, I've still been around here. Um, I haven't gone anywhere. Uh, the last, I think the last you guys heard was at the Friendship Express where I was busy with the, a lot of the con preparation stuff, mm-hmm. which we enjoyed a lot. True, true. And after that, I, I actually, uh, I did take a break from, uh, pony, um, how do you say? Pony centric things for, for a while. Like, for example, I would normally browse EQD quite diligently every day. Mm-hmm. But, uh, after the con, I give myself a break of maybe about <laughs> one or two months. And, uh, after that, I, I would be coming back to finish my backlog of, uh, catching up on uh. all the pony community news uh, that's happening on EQD. Uh, a lot have happened since then. Uh, I'm around the EQD Discord. Uh, I'm around the Sea PonyCon uh, Discord. Uh, just, just generally taking an observational view of the community rather than actively participating at this point. Ah, uh, all right. And well, since you're taking a, well, I, I think the last time you were officially on the mm. channel was during the TFE comic book panel that uh, we had. Oh yes, that was the official one. Yes, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, that that was a fun one. Like that was a fun one. Talking about the comics and whatnot. Like that that was really interesting. Yeah, it was you, me, and Emmy. Yeah, we really enjoyed the idea yeah, of the yeah. comics. And but, had a lot to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> true. And you know what? Um, I I think when you took a break, right? I, I think I pulled you into something very deep. Yes, uh, I believe that 
it is really it is video game related, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And said yes. rabbit hole has something to do with well yes, that one very popular game that came <laughs> out. Yeah, the popular first person shooter by the name of Overwatch, which won the game of the year uh in two thousand and sixteen, was it? Oh yeah, but I was thinking more about payday. Oh <laughs> darn. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yes. Overwatch is a good guess too because we do ha- we we have been playing a lot of Overwatch. Mm, yes. And talking about Overwatch, um, there's a new character coming out. Uh, no surprise there, but the surprise is the character here has a skin called Twilight. Mm, mm. Matching colors. Yes. Matching colors. You know. <laughs> mm. So the new character for Overwatch is a centaur type robot named Orisa. Um, officially her color is not the twilight skin, but it's mostly brownish and a bit of green, something like that, like something like Lucio, but more mm-hmm. African based, like Numbani. But still, yeah. um, the skin twilight here, like, it is similar to the, um, twilight colorless, like our favorite Elecorn twilight. Mm-hmm. The purple pony. Mm-hmm. True that. And yeah, uh, this is a nice nod from, the guys at Blizzard, like, okay, here is your pony reference. Go ahead at it. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, Blizzard is a company which actually has um, has got no no issues with uh, referencing other other franchises, and they've done it before. So a pony reference, I think it's like it's inevitable that they've got to do it at some time. And here we have the Twilight skin. True, 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 true. And Star, what do you think about this? Frankly, I found it very interesting. I do believe that you do like the video games, right? Like, uh, you're an avid video game player and buyer. Yeah, I, I do buy, I do play the game. Uh, so, but, but, have you seen any other video games that does this? I think there's a few, but what about you? Have you seen any that you can name off? So far, I don't really remember. It, but it does appear like once in a while, like pony reference here and there. Yeah, like, Way back when, it's a bit of a surprise to have a pony reference. Now it's just like, oh, that's new. A common thing now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but still, but still, this is fun. I can't wait for Orisa to come out so we can all play her. Because trust me, she is very good. I had a game just now where it was five Orisa, one Bastion, and one Mercy. And that was fun. I just want to make a comment regarding the skin itself. Looking at the picture, uh, is there like a cutie mark on this skin or not? I think there is. Like near the flank, there is some kind of Numbani logo. Hmm, interesting. I know, right? So, <laughs> like, is this really a reference or is it just a coincidence? So, yeah. We no, no, no. See, see something about reference, right? They cannot uh, state it out here. Hey, look, guys, we did something pony. So, like, yeah, like us. But, nah, they, they can't do that. So, what they do is like, oh, you think so? Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so, they have to be okay. cheeky with it. So, like, eh, okay. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Okay. All right. <laughs> because not like the movies, video games are a bit strict when it comes to parodying or homage. At least we get to see this character on all fours. Like, would it be interesting if this character would be on all twos instead of all fours? Like, eh, it'll be weird, don't you think? <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my head around the design of the robot. Like, it looks like she can stand on two legs. Why does she need an extra four? Well, uh, <laughs> in the lore base, it was based on a robot that had four legs and whatnot, but still, it's based on that. But talking about two legs and purple color, um, Equestria Girls, it seems we have more pony to humans now. Oh, yeah. Just recently, they announced, what's that? Starlight Glimmer and Daring Do? Yes, and others. Mm. And others. Um, this was some kind of game thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I looked at it, and I'm a bit confused with what we're getting because during the New York Toy Fair we had um some announcements or some releases of toys coming in the future like the Daring Do Equestria Girl Minis and the Starlight Glimmer Equestria Girl Minis and so on. Mm. And it seems that um someone uh kind of data minded 
their website and got uh, images. All right. So it's basically not an official uh, announcement. But rather somebody looked into the code of the website and they found a few hidden images over there. Yes, indeed. That That is one of the... Uh, how do I put this? Data mining is one of those things where it's interesting when done right. It, you, you know how you do... You know how sometimes when something comes out, people want to know everything about the game. So mm-hmm. they look at every aspect of data they have and discover a few things. This usually happens in Street Fighter, Overwatch, and other games that people are really interested in. No, technically, not not data mining, but rather some clever use of uh, URL addresses, I believe. Because if you look at it carefully, it's actually, uh, you just type in mylivepony.hasbro.com and add a slash images, and it pops up the whole list of images. <laughs> so it's actually... Clever use of the URL address to find this uh, source of images. The database, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I, I know it sounds lame when you explain it that way, but data mining is awesome, man. <laughs> Okay, fine, fine, fine. Why not just say that they hacked them then? No, 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 it's not hacking. <laughs> See, hacking is malicious. Data mining, oh. now, that's something else. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, I'll give you this one. <laughs> but in all honesty, this is cool, this is cool. One of those things where, okay, the toy comes out, we get to see some characters coming out, and yeah, Starlight Glamour, Daring Do. Those two characters, Starlight Glamour, I don't understand. Daring Do is another one that I'm still scratching my head around. Well, we're seeing that there are these characters in the website. Um, hmm, I kind of forget. Is there a new Equestria Girls coming out, like Equestria Girls uh, 4, is it now? The fourth movie was Camp Everfree, but the new one that's coming out is going to be a three-part um, uh, mini-series going to be yes. up on Netflix. Yes, yes. It'll, it'll be like Equestria Girls Special or something. Like yeah, that. something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Probably this might be a little prelude to uh, that upcoming uh, three-parter. Uh, I guess we'll never know until until it releases. Yeah, true. So we just have to wait. But, Star, what do you think, man? Honestly, I think Daring Do would be an interesting one because of the fact that how would they portray the character? Will it be just like the one in the show where she has a, like, what do you call it, another face that says that she is the writer for the Daring Do books? Mm-hmm. A.K. Yearling? A.K. Yearling, yep. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. And also, everyone's questioning, why with the makeup for her eyes... I heard, like, I did remember that, and I didn't really um, notice until you guys pointed out. And you know what? Yeah, what is up with the heavy um, eye brush thingy? Like, oh, wow, okay. Oh, well, maybe she's undercover. She has uh, some lipstick on this and this image. Yeah, true that. <laughs> maybe they wanted to show that she's older this way, you know? Well, I just think that she's undercover. Um, probably, like... Uh, getting getting under Dr. Cavallaron's and his goons' uh, shenanigans and stuff. Mm. That's just my take on it, anyway. Probably it's one of those three parters, right? So yeah, we'll, we'll 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 probably see something interesting. That's cool. But here's a real question: Starlight Glimmer, which verse, the Equestria Girls or the Pony verse? Oh shoot! Now this is gonna get. <laughs> You know, you do know that this is kind of like a controversial topic in, inside the fandom, don't you? I know! It's one of those things where, okay, first you got Starlight Glimmer. People don't really like her that much because, well, she's quote-unquote OP, too OP for Twilight, whatever it is. And then, like, you got the Equestria Girls where people don't really like Equestria Girls. So it's like... I know. A combination like a of two. Part of disasters coming to happen, right? Like the people don't like this aspect of the show, and the people don't like that aspect of the show. And you bring them together, what you're gonna get? Obviously, <laughs> you're gonna get something which like people really don't like, right? And That's start, one start thing. I, I know, <laughs> but in all honesty, I've come to warm up to Starlight Glimmer. She's a not bad character. She's a redeemable character. Like you know, I mean. I've never seen anything wrong with her, actually. And it was only later on which I discovered that, hey, there's actually a lot of hate for this character. I wonder why. And then when I read uh, some comments at Fashion Daily and other places, I'd be like, oh, it's that kind of conversation again. All right, I don't care. And I just leave it be. You know, 
with every character that comes up um, that, that they have controversial issues, people are going to complain. And unfortunately, the loudest voice is going to be, um, you know, not the correct voice. Yeah, it's not true, one true. That you should be to. Yeah, but still, yeah. it's their opinion and they're entitled to it. But still, yeah. um, it's one of those things where if you don't like it, don't watch it. Nobody's forcing you. Plus, exactly. this is non, well, technically, I don't know how to say this. I'm not even sure if this is canon or not canon anymore. That last <laughs> movie that the friendship games happened, um, we thought, okay, the Equestria Girls universe is non-canon to the real universe. Okay, we can accept that. Nah, you know what? It's non-canon. So, yay. Okay, whatever it is. And then suddenly we get that line where Twilight just pops out, says, oh, sorry guys, I have this time problem thingy, whatever it is, before the season end of premiered. And we got <laughs> info that, what? Some kind of time problem came up? What? Yep. You know, you know, actually, you brought up a very interesting topic. Um, my take on it is that uh, the universe are interlinked ever since the first movie. The the Ponyverse and the Equestria Girls, they are interlinked on uh, based on that magic mirror portal thing. But after the first movie, they decided to distance uh, themselves from... Uh, Hasbro decided to distance themselves from it. Mm-hmm. And, and they are testing the waters and see whether... You know, people like the show or don't like the show. Should we make another one? And apparently, response was good enough. So they make number two, then they make number three, then they make number four, and here we are now. Yeah, three more new mini series that's going to be on Netflix. So yeah, right, which I don't mind really. More pony content, more, more awesomeness. Yay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But still, uh, we have not answered this one yet. So my theory for this one is. Crackpot theory of the week. Um, this Starlight Glimmer is going to be the Starlight Glimmer of the Pony Universe. And she is going to be jumping into the portal before the My Little Pony movie comes out. Ah, interesting. So, you read the synopsis, right, for the My Little Pony movie? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just the general synopsis where... Um, bad guy comes, take away power, now the main six have to go to get them back. Isn't that how it's always been for all the... <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's so general, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. If that's the, if that's the case, then, then um, no spoilers there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so th- technically, th- that's the situation, or that's the time. I think Starlight goes to the library, asks Twilight, hey, what's this mirror doing here, and why is it uh, shining? Oh, that's... Uh, Mirror to alternate universe. Oh, that's cool. Starlight Glimmer jumps in. <laughs> <laughs> My own take on it is this Starlight Glimmer is probably naive and nothing to do with the uh, Ponyverse or even the, you know, the before or after the... the so she's new the then. Yeah. You remember how like we get Sai Twai who is completely obvi- oblivious to the situation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's going to fall along that. That, that line so I think she might be a blank slate character and then they can do whatever they want with her ah. and you just have to see uh, how, how they portray her alright right. that's cool that's cool uh, so and if you're talking about Equestria Girls right we have this map the map of Equestria Girls um, mm. so how do, how do I even want to describe this one um, this mm. map is not as full as the one that we got for, um, what you call this, um, Equestria. Remember that full map where we got the whole map of Equestria, the Dragon Kingdom, the Griffin, whatever it is. Yep, I remember that, and it's actually quite a detailed map too. Um, was it the Badlands at the south? Yeah, yeah something like that. Dragon. And Crystal Empire Dragon. to the north. Yeah, yeah, that one. It was actually uh, quite quite a famous map. It's even in the IDW comics. Where else have we seen it? Um, I think a few fan expansions of that map has been out before. Yeah, and somebody yeah. did a Google thingy where, well, not really Google, but similar to Google mapping where everything ah, is. Yes, the terrain and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that was interesting. That was interesting. But we yep. got this map here. Um, it's kind of the map of the town of Cantalart, I think. I'd say it's an overhead view of the uh, Cantor. The town of which Cantalot High is situated in. Probably, yeah. And you know what? It seems pretty cool. So what do we have on the map? Uh, looks like cutie mark symbols. Ah, yes, that too. So at first when I 
first saw this uh, picture or map, I'm just thinking, hmm, what is this? What What's going on here? And as it goes on, I see that, oh, we get locations of the main seven's houses. So <laughs> we got like where Applejack lives, uh, Twilight, Rainbow, Rarity, Fluttershy, Sun, Set, and Rainbow Dash. We know where they all live. So that's cool. And apparently, Twilight lives next to Crystal Prep and has to take the bus to... That doesn't make sense if you look at the map. <laughs> yes, the map, I don't think it's to scale. It's it's ridiculous. It looks like Twilight's house is right right next to Crystal Prep, separated by only two trees. Well, okay, trees. like if you really think about it, probably this is just a resized version of the place. But technically, when if you do a really elaborate mapping, she lives far. But technically, yeah. if you think about it, right, the location of what happens in the show doesn't really make sense because Twilight needs to grab a bus from her location to get to Cantalot High. And if you take a look see at the road that she lives in, it's not that far. Nah, they probably just wanted to fit all in into their map so that you can have an interactive map where you can, you know, mouse over and click this and click yeah, that. Yeah, probably. So <laughs> what you're saying is that they couldn't fill it all in? Yes, they couldn't fit it all in. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yes. But still, it's interesting to see uh, where is what. Like, you get to see, okay, if this map is canon, quote-unquote, we get to see, oh, this is where uh, Twilight lives. This is where Sunset lives. Oh, there's Sugar Cube Corner. Oh, that's where they perform for the show and stuff. Yep. It's, it gives us a general idea of the, of the situation which they're in, which is uh, which is good, because uh, every good franchise needs this background uh, uh, settings to expand upon their universe. It becomes interesting. Yeah, and Star, what do you think, man? Like you've been quiet. Mm. Well, it it's, looks interesting. I don't watch uh, EQG though. What? Uh, I <laughs> I haven't watched e- EQG from the first one. Do it! Do it! <laughs> You never watch any of the Equestria Girls movies? No, not really. Uh, no. Yeah, but but it does give me a few in- interesting insights though from just looking at this map. One thing was that I noticed was in the city area. I noticed one of the building at the sky, well, the skyscraper, mm-hmm. the rooftop. There is looks to be like a brown horse. Yeah, like, like you, like the like the one in Manhattan, isn't it? Yeah. What makes it interesting was, does it reminds you of the twilight, the tr- table in the middle of the, at the tree? Yeah. During I mean, the tree uh, house? Oh yeah, yeah that one. The Golden Oaks Library there, there is a bust yeah. of this, uh, really? of this, this statue there. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's there, it's there. Probably the one, uh, season one episode. For me, when I look at that, um, building there, it reminds me of the one in Manhattan. So, like, yeah. oh, okay, Manhattan, like, oh, but now when we are talking about it in depth, like, this map doesn't make sense at all. Where is this <laughs> even? Yeah. Well, let me just uh, describe out the map. To me, it looks like um, everyone is spread, everyone's houses is spread out all over the map with Camp Everfree at the bottom right. Mm-hmm. I have an issue with Fluttershy's Mabel being only one butterfly. For some reason. <laughs> 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 fan purist. Yeah, but as we said, the big city center fill up the uh, top top right corner of the map and the rest of it uh, is pretty much suburban and very spaced out. So, so the more I look at it, the more it doesn't make sense. And <laughs> there seems to be one thing that I noted though was the bottom left. There looks to be one lone cabin. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. An unknown cabin in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I hope they explain that. If not, it's going to be really interesting. But you know what this reminds me of, seriously? Is it uh, Silent Hill? No, no, no. What this reminds me of is the MLP Game Love game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yay, there's this the thing. Click on this icon, click on the icon, click on the icon. Yeah, it could be. Who knows? Really, the MLP game lock has got the dancing in the game. Oh, Maybe they're going to expand to something else. Yeah, they did try to expand, right? Like in the latest updates. I, I forgot what yeah. they did. They added the Crystal Empire to it. So ah. 
Yeah, apparently you need to collect those uh, orb thingies, <laughs> snow globe thingies, and then you can unlock the crystal empire, <laughs> and you get crystal ponies. Oh gosh. Well, have fun then. I, I, it's been a while since I played that game. Like, oof, never again. Uh, but moving on to the final news, um, off from Equestria Girls on to... E- back to the pony world. Yes, back to the mm. pony world. Season 7. So Season 7, yes! So last week we mentioned that John Delancey may not be coming on to the show. Someone asked, are you in Season 7 of Ponies? And he replied, I don't think so. So I think because of that, everybody has been on a tizzy panic, like, oh, why won't he come on? (laughs) And this is what he has to say. Honestly, I don't know, nor I do keep up. I think it's a good show and you should watch it when I'm on and when I'm not. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. The man himself replied. Yes. And basically, here's the thing. Like I mentioned before last week, the show, how they do stuff is, I'm not saying that I know inside stuff, but I'm just assuming that, okay, they have a meeting, they describe on things that they want to do, Hasbro has to give it the thumbs up or thumbs down on ideas, and they have to do the whole process again. With John Delancey here, there has never been a season where he has never been on before. With every season, except season one, he has been on either once or twice. The lowest is three times. So, I'm sure he will be in Season 7, but when or where, we're not sure. Or this could he just be trolling people because he can't say anything because of C&Ds. No, no. Probably just he genuinely doesn't know because... You know how it is with recordings. They, they record lots of stuff, right? And it's not possible to keep up with every aspect of their recordings. And they don't know when that recording actually goes into which season and which episode and when does the episode release. A lot of variables are in play when, when they have done their voice lines. There's no, there's no proper way for them to be sure and remember when, when, when. It... Yeah, that and also, um, how do I put this? That and also this could, this season could be uh, split into two parts, like uh, the first part and the second part, where there's a gap of three months in between. <gasps> the horror. I know. But still, more time to play Overwatch. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, but still, but still, um, <coughs> dog goes behind. Sorry about that. Dog goes. Oh, oh. But anyway, uh, for me, I won't be worrying that much because, come on. I'm sure that Hasbro knows that the fan really love Discord, so they want him to be on as much as possible. Probably a two appearance thing or a three appearance thing. It still be good. Like he still needs to develop. There's still characters need to be developing with him because as for now, everybody is kind of goody goody with him, on good terms with him now. And since he has a D and D game with um Big Mac and Spike so that's something to expand also. That is true. Um looking forward to see more of uh, Discord in season seven. Just hoping for the best. True, 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 true. And Star, what do you think, man? Pretty much the same as what Norman said. Uh it's just we just don't even know what, what would be how he would be appearing in the season seven again. Cause it could be the same like what you said, could be split into two parts of the show and then they could be just shown the second part of the season. Maybe who knows if possible. Maybe C and B wise, um, or just as a saying for sure. If he and William Shatner together, Ooh. what would that be? Oh yeah, I do remember Shatner's on. Yeah, that would be awesome actually. Uh, Shatner is on the season seven or in the movie? Yeah. Season seven, season seven. Season seven. Yeah, that'd be great actually. Then there'd be some. <laughs> inside reference between the Star Trek uh, stars. I know, that would be cool. Uh, you know what? For them not to get... Uh, but you know what? Also, because of having uh, Shannon on, they couldn't get the money to fork over to John Delancey, probably. I don't know. I, I, I think that's a huge lie. But who knows? Uh, probably. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, come on, think about it. Like Having a celebrity come onto the show 
it takes a lot of cash, takes a lot of money. But your Hasbro, you last season you got um who's the singer for Rara? Lena Hall. Yeah, Lena Hall. You got Lena Hall. You got Weird Al, and you got Jelly Nancy at the same time too. And I'm guessing you could do it for this one too. So. Yeah, I want more John Delancey and Shatner, if possible, in the same episode. Yay! There'll be a lot of fan chasm. I know, <laughs> like, the fans will go wild. Fan. Yeah, it's just like wild of explosion, not like, oh, oh my god, what's this? <laughs> they be like, and those trackies will be like, oh, what is this? <laughs> and they have to watch it just to watch Shatner. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely looking forward to the William Shatner episode of <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Can't wait, can't wait. Uh, well, that is the news for this week. So, um, this is thing I want to do, like, uh, it's pretty new for you guys, but for the rest of the audience at home, we're doing, we've been doing this for a while now, but I keep calling it a new topic. And said topic is going to be called, or is called, what has been irritating us for this week. So, as for me, per usual, it's, <laughs> uh, besides the casual game of Overwatch and Payday, it's more anime and cartoons. Uh, the one that I have been watching and I really highly recommend you all watch is Star vs. The Forces of Evil. They just ended <gasps> on a real high and we got no idea what's happening because they left it on a huge cliffhanger. So, we have to wait and just hope that they come out so we can see the resolution for uh, Cliffhanger. Wait a minute. Is is the series still going? Or well, it is, is still it going. It's still going. It ended on season 2, I think? I, I highly recommend that show if you guys haven't watched it. Like, go watch it because it's fun. I actually did watch this, uh, um, uh, what do you call uh, this cartoon uh, on on the plane. Oh, really? Uh, Star vs. So Evil? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Star vs. That's the one with the with the with the rocks one, right? As in the heroes are, are rock. Mm, Am I no. getting the right anyway? No, 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 no. I, I think you're thinking of something else. Like uh, Star vs. the Force of Evil is something on Disney Channel. Hmm, can you describe to me the general plot again? Wow. Okay. Um. Confused my cartoon. All right. Okay. Long story short, uh, you got a main character called Star Butterfly. She is a princess from the land called Muni. It's a magical place far, far away. Um, her parents think that she is a rebel princess and needs to be uh, well grounded. So she's, yes, and, yeah. yes. <laughs> continue, continue. Yeah. So she sends her to a human world, to the human world which is our world, and is forced to live with a boy named Marco and his family. The family accepts her into the family and starts to live with them. And hijinks sees you. Okay, uh, I did watch this. I remember now. It's the one where the first episode it involves puppies with laser eyes, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I did watch that because it was a long flight. And uh, to, to kill time, I watched the uh, Steven Universe. That oh. was the one with the rocks. And then uh, Star Wars The Forces of Evil, the first episode. And... Um, Another one or two. But the bottom line is, that was pretty much an interesting uh, cartoon, which reminded me a bit of Adventure Time, actually. Um, crazy <laughs> hijinks and shoes. Yeah. The, st- the style is more or less the same, very 2D, very cartoony and over the top. Uh, and, and the characters, well, based on the first two episodes I watched, looks like they, they're very, very good potential for development. Oh, yes, and, it is, it is. Yeah, and and they're now in what season two? Yeah, so I think season I bet two. Yeah, uh, something, something, something to look forward to. Actually. Yeah, and you guys should watch it at home. Like the characters are not how would I put this? Um, they're not dumb or lame. You know, one of those things where okay, Sid Princess is developed. Like she has powers, so she can uh, narwhal blast people in the face. So okay. She's pretty awesome. She can protect herself. Oh, yeah. But oh no, what the happened? The fight, the fight scenes are a little bit like Samurai Jack, wasn't it? More or less, more or less. <laughs> and well, you, when you have a character where oh, um, the female lead is strong, so the boy he is kind of geeky. He he's been shown to be rather nerdy and geeky. And oh no, this guy he's gonna be lame. 
Nope, he knows Kung Fu. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, alright. Uh, they're, they're pretty well for each other. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he knows Kung Fu, she knows magic, and they make an awesome duo of mm-hmm. fighting bad guys. Yep, yep. And All right. the, that's the things I've been watching. Oh, and I also watched Logan this week. Logan was fun. I would not recommend you if you're under the age of 13. I think, what was that movie in the States? No, it's the movie uh, Hard R in the States. So, nah, it's good, but I don't recommend you watching it. You, you need to be an adult. Yes. Sad to say, uh, I actually didn't follow all the latest movies. Uh, Logan, is it a Wolverine movie? Yes. But here's the thing. If you haven't watched any of the newer X-Men movies, no problem. Just throw that out the window. Watching Logan by itself is already good enough. Ah, okay. Right, I'll take up your recommendation. I'll look it up. Yeah, so basically if you have uh, zero knowledge or a little bit of knowledge of the X-Men universe, it will not hinder your enjoyment of the movie because knowing a bit or knowing a lot doesn't really play in the part of said movie. Yay! So passing on the torch to you, Doc, what have you been entertaining yourself with? (laughs) What have I been entertaining myself with? Oh, okay. Um, in the Ponyverse, I've been catching up on uh, Equestria Daily News. <laughs> I just actually, um, occasion, I occasionally look back and find good animations I like, good music I like, and view some arts which I, uh, I've never visited for quite some time. Recently, as in uh, the New Year and the uh, Christmas celebrations, I noticed that the fandom actually produced uh, quite a lot of high quality content which I have largely ignored uh, due to other things. But coming back, I reaffirmed that this fandom really is a creative one, and uh, even though in hiatus, they still produce lots of content. So I've been consuming fake content um, for the past week. And aside from consuming pony content, I have been playing a few video games. I recently got Overwatch, and I uh, played with Norman and a gang. <laughs> it's quite fun. I do recommend that. If you if if you can afford the uh, uh, the Blizzard pli- price tag of the game. Oh yeah, the Blizzard price tag for the game for our American friend is not that bad. It's yes. just that well, sometimes if you get tricked into not really trick, if you get the temptation of buying loot boxes. Oh, <laughs> those loot boxes! Oh, you man! What? It's true. <laughs> aesthetics. Oh, don't pretend you don't like those aesthetics. So besides the watch. A little bit of payday. What are the games? I played the bomb game. Oh, uh, keep, keep talking, talking and nobody. uh. Yeah, keep talking and nobody explodes. Uh, a good, a good, uh, party game to get, uh, between friends and it really practices your communication skills. <laughs> like you're diffusing, yeah, you're diffusing a bomb in front of you and you must make sure that both sides understand each other well enough, uh, because you're playing for time. Mm. If you run out of time. Goes up in your face. Quite <laughs> yeah, fun, quite fun. It's one of those things. So it basically could be like, okay, cut the right wire, right. So, sorry, cut uh, right. No, sorry. Um, cut the left wire, right. So the right, no, the left, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, no, the left. Yeah. So right. Yeah, that kind of thing is... uh, right. I mean, no. I mean, left, left, left. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that game is fun. That game is fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, what else? Other than that? Uh, not much, actually. Um, got a whole bunch of games in my library, which I haven't touched yet. I'll get to them someday. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, alrighty then. So what about you, Star? Me? A lot of stuff happens this week, basically. <laughs> so what have you been doing? Like, what has been keeping you busy with the entertainment? Well... Only wise, not much difference is because we are in the state of hiatus and waiting until April for the new season. Mm-hmm. So right now going on is just reading uh, manga uh, as per usual, keeping uh, weekly track on the latest releases on the manga and just uh, reading on it. What, have you, what are for, you reading, by the way? Uh, Shokugeki no Soma, the cooking manga. Oh, okay. One, one Piece. Uh-huh. What else? Black Clover. Basic most of the yeah most of the shonen jump ah most of the shonen all right all right so have you been reading the One Punch? Yes, I read One Punch Man. Ah, that that couldn't have come out 
often. Like that that release is very limited. It's a bit weird with the schedule. Originally, it was like one month releases, uh-huh. and it was like about something about ten pages, and now out of nowhere, it was like about what thirty yeah. pages. Yeah, so something that, like that. that. Or not? I'm not too sure. The schedule is like the releases was a bit weird. There's like two part to like each of the comics. The, yeah, the yeah. Manga. Th- that's a bit annoying for me. Like, I-, I want to catch up, man. Like, I really want to know. D- don't keep me hanging. It's like, ah, why is it so annoying? Why, why don't you at least show the resolution? No, no, no. We, we need to hang you here so you get to, no, no, no. <laughs> Jerks. Then again, there's like, I'm not sure what to say about this, but basically the comics is like a lot of Effects. Uh, I still remember one. I still remember one of the chapter was basically one of the robots was I can't remember what's the character name. It was just like flying through the end, just landing, and that's the end of the chapter. (laughs) (laughs) And it was like it was like what? That's you? And then it was like end of the chapter. I was like, huh? (laughs) Wait, what? What happened? I I know that that is that's just bad. Uh, But still, um, other than that, is that all? And video games, a lot of updates. Uh, Payday 2 just got updated, and then one of the other games that I played, Dungeon Defenders, also Ooh. got updated. Dungeon Defenders 2, Subnautica also got updated. Uh, there's basically a lot of games suddenly out of nowhere, and then big news. Uh, it, well, other than that, there's also Nintendo Switch that got released, oh, yeah. and just been reading the news out of it, and well, it's been a great console, but it's been littered with bugs. Oh, well, bugs I mean, and issues, it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's first release, so uh, it's to be expected. Like for people who had the, um, not really pre-release, but people who did get a review copy of the console were complaining that the left Joy-Con had uh, problems with syncing. Yeah, and actually, there's a website that has tested out the thing, and even Nintendo themselves that acknowledge the issue, mm. they just announced that. You please don't play close to an aquarium, microwave, this kind of thing. So I was like, yeah. uh, what? Well, it's, it's something to do with the signal. And signal, I think yeah. after a patch, they'll fix it. Yeah, it's not that bad. No, no, but funny thing is, it's already been in one patch and they're still not in fix. The right Joy-Con, uh, the controller named Joy-Con, uh, it's no problem. <laughs> it's just the left. Yeah, it's only the left side, which is like weird. They did say, I do not know. It probably because of the Bluetooth connection or something that caused the desync. But we won't know until N- Nintendo themselves like release a proper patch or like worst come to worst the hardware. Oh, that no. is the, the Bluetooth. Yeah, but still that that is bad if you need to get a what you call it if you need to get a replacement console. Like some places like I think in the States you could just mail it in with the receipt and whatnot and you'll get a replacement yeah. for free. But over here I've that's gonna be difficult. No, it's not gonna be. It's origin. It's gonna be like warranty issues again. Probably. And like how long? With yeah, like how long they gonna give? I don't know. It's yeah, but this is different. Nintendo's fault. Like this is a, a manufacturing defect from Nintendo themselves. So it's gonna take time. It, even okay, either they do a software patch, or they have to replace the whole thing. And replacing is gonna cost them a lot of money. Yeah. Ah, but well, uh, that's besides the point. Um, you haven't got it yet, right? Nope. Uh, they decided to wait it out, see uh, if there's anything come out or not. I mean, there's a lot of games coming down the line, oh, yeah. but right now, as for the console, I think might as well just wait it out first to see what's yeah. happening later. Is it gonna fix? Who knows? They're gonna release a second version of it. We have no idea. Maybe just the controller change or something. Nah, I don't think so. Nintendo doesn't really. <laughs> do updated versions of the console. Uh, if you take a look, see at their long line of history, the only mm. time where they did a console update was for the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Just those are the only two. Well, again, continuing on, you got the N64 with multiple body changes, but that's about it. Um, beyond that point, with the GameCube, Cube. the Wii and the Wii U, they never had a facelift. Not much, but the DS has a lot. Ah, DS. yes, the DS. Yeah, the portable consoles, basically. Yeah, the There's portable consoles, are, yeah. But this, in this fact, it will be interesting because this will be the first portable home console. Yeah. So we're not sure whether they're going to follow the 3DS line, whether they're going to be 
a new updates along the line for the console or just be like the same as like Wii, Wii U, where there will be no changes until like later, in, I don't know, until Obsolete or something. Because it's run by NVIDIA, by the way. Mm. So not sure how it's going to handle. True. But you know what? I I recently saw a video by Game Theory where they were talking about the Nintendo Switch. And one interesting that they mentioned was that if Nintendo were to produce some kind of controller add-on for some things, they were able to do it. It's just take another Joy-Con, plug it in, done. So that is an interesting idea if they were to do it. I mean, there's been accessories out in the market now. I mean, like, the, what you call it, the classic uh, staring mm. wheel <laughs> for really? the Joy-Con. <laughs> yeah, I seen it, I was like, ah. Uh-huh. Wow. Like, Seriously, it's just like the Wii again. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just like another staring wheel for the Joy-Con. Okay, is that what I haven't seen? Like, it's just like aesthetics, basically. Wow, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, besides that, what's up, man? What, what else? What else? Uh, AMD Ryzen is just out in the market. <laughs> oh, no, don't even get me started. I don't have the money to buy anything. Uh, boo, boo on you. <laughs> AMD Ryzen, there's also what? Nvidia just announces their new graphic card, and I, I don't, this way is loads of news basically. <laughs> uh, so that's been entertaining you, tech news and the gaming console news. Alright. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. Uh, the show's Twitter account is at mbshow, and as for me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. Also, please subscribe to our site show, the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. On that show, you'll have me, Silver Quill, and Sapphire Heart Song, and also probably a guest talking about the pony episodes, the pony comics, and also the pony movies. And sometimes we talk about other things, probably video games, movies, or discuss about random stuff. Probably talk about, uh, let's see, movies like Kung Pao. That's a fun movie. <laughs> or maybe talk about video games, Overwatch, I, I don't know. We, we do a lot of things that we really enjoy. So, do subscribe there and check us out like we do a lot of this and also if you like to support the show you can support us at patreon.com slash the mbs show over there we have the awesome tip jar where you can just tip us a dollar and we'll say thank you and you'll have full access to whatever we post on the patreon page there's a deleted episode that's up there really entertaining it's a it's me going solo very entertaining. <laughs> and also a $5 jar where you can, well, tell us what to talk about. Over there, if you say, oh, do a whole show talking about food and we'll do it. $5. Yay. I think that'll give us a burger, probably. <laughs> uh, and I would like to thank our Patreon supporters, Lurker Cat, Pilot Genesis, Name Dragotorius, and Starstream. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for the awesome support. And I, I'm just speechless. You you guys are too nice for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Charlie. And this is Starstream. And we'll guys catch you with another amazing and fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye bye. See ya.